Welcome back to our Total Sense Bite Size episode. I'm Tom Hensky, and I'm here to help parents teach their kids about money. Welcome back. Today, I'd like to talk about the psychological roadblocks that parents face when they're talking to their kids about money. I've got my own personal opinions on this that you've heard in a few of our other episodes on It Makes Total Sense and on the blog. But today, I have a very special guest, psychologist Michael Klein, and he is the president of MK Insights. And what he does there is he manages professional organizational development, doing one-on-one coaching, advising, workshops, keynote presentations. I could go on and on. He's also an author, uh, Trapped in the Family Business, that I think came out in 2018. And he's going to give us a very qualified and unique perspective on the human brain, on how it pertains to parenting our kids about money. So, Michael, welcome. Thank you so much, Tom. Happy to be here. Let's hop right in. So here's my first question for you. Why can it be challenging for parents to discuss money with their kids? The first thing that comes to mind for me is, uh, you know, money is such a loaded topic. And it's really hard to talk about money in the absence of emotion and in the absence of personal history. I'll never forget in graduate school, one of my favorite professors said that, her clients, her patients were far more likely to talk about their sex life than they would talk about money. That even in therapy, uh, money can be really a very taboo subject because it is so loaded and there's so much connected to it, so much meaning uh, that it can be hard to approach. And is there sometimes some shame involved with mistakes that we've made as parents that we say, hmm, I don't know if I really want to talk about that because I don't feel good about my own planning. Absolutely. It really, and this is what is so great about your program, helping people talk to their kids, I think, forces them to confront their own issues of shame or of guilt and to really take a look at how they handle their finances and how they think about money. Because, you know, the best way to to, to learn something is to teach, right? And so if you're going to try to talk to your kids uh, about uh, financial literacy, you really have to come to terms with where you're at, I think, or else it's just going to be a train wreck. So it's one of the things that I love about your program. It kind of forces that issue, I think, uh, for people to to deal with their own, again, shame, guilt, mistakes that they've made, missteps, and ways in which they maybe still feel unqualified uh, to manage their own finances. So let's hop into this then. How do you think the messages about money are communicated by parents What's the best way to do it? You know, what are you seeing? Where and it doesn't even need to be about money. It could just be communication in general. One of the things that I think is is the worst for kids is to just be completely silent about it because you know, Tom. I mean, kids will pick up on whatever parents are feeling, and they're they're sponges. They're going to absorb your values. They're going to see how you're acting. They're watching you so, so closely. So not sitting down, not having a direct conversation about this stuff is is the worst thing that you can really do because people will, kids will just fill in the gaps with whatever ideas they may have. So by far, the most important thing that you need to do is really have a a direct and a series of of direct conversations with kids um, because it's not just going to happen magically. And, And the hard thing is, as you know, and as you've talked about on the podcast, we don't often have role models for how to do this. You know, our parents didn't ever often sit down with us and have these conversations and talk to us about what are some good practices in saving, in investing, what are credit cards about, how can they be helpful, how can they be harmful? Those conversations just don't happen. And so we're left working with our own kids or trying to figure out how to parent our own kids without having had it done to us. And so, again, um, uh, it's what I love about what you've done here is you've given people not only a roadmap, but very clear directions on on how to talk to their kids uh, about about this from a really young age. How about this conversation of money being a taboo topic, whether that's at home or in the social settings? Do you have any thoughts on that? Because money is so connected, or I should say can be connected to people's sense of worth, self-worth, their sense of personal achievement in life, uh, because often money is a scorecard that people use to compare themselves 
to other people, it's it's avoided because it can be really, really painful. And I think for parents, what can be really difficult is that uh, talking about money it can lead to other questions and other very sensitive topics that parents may not be ready to talk about. And so going anywhere near the topic of money can be that much harder. So what do we do then? Okay, I get that we all can feel that way in one shape or form. In fact, we all have something that we don't feel comfortable talking about because we're just, uh, you know, we don't want to be that imposter talking about something that we don't know anything about. But, you know, are there any tips for communicating about money uh, that is you would consider like psychologically healthy? Absolutely. Uh, I think one of the, the best things that you could do when you're talking to your kids about money is to not be afraid to say, I don't know. Uh, it, it's role modeling for kids that, yeah, we're always learning and we're always getting better and developing our skills and saying, I'm not sure how something works. I don't have that knowledge is, is a wonderful thing to say to kids. So I don't think parents should feel like they need to have all the answers. And similar to that, I think it's important for parents to be able to be somewhat transparent and honest about, look, uh, here are some mistakes that I've made. And even, you know, here are some areas that I'm struggling with. Now, I don't mean to say that you want to stress or overwhelm your kids by saying, you know, we've got money issues and here how, here's how it's going to affect you. I mean, there's something important about doing that. And there's a time and a place to do that really carefully and thoughtfully. But I think it's incredibly healthy to just say, look, I've struggled with this part of money in my life. And it's been an ongoing process for me, just as it will be for you. I think making sure that kids understand that, yes, there are absolutely best practices when it comes to understanding and managing your money and saving and investing. Everybody has to figure out their own path, really. Everybody has to experiment a little bit on their own and figure out what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with, what works. And so I think giving your kids that space and saying that you will find your way, the only thing that you could do that would be bad is really is to not be thoughtful about it, is to not think about it, is to not learn from your mistakes. And as an adult, we're never done, right? We're never done, hopefully, learning from our mistakes and experimenting and trying new things. So I think bringing that kind of that that sense of everybody's an individual, everybody has their own path to follow, there are good things that you can do, generally speaking, but you're going to have to you're going to have to find your path in some ways on your own and figure it out as you go through life. And it will change over the course of your life. So it's not as if you're going to educate your kids and there's going to be a test and they're going to get an A plus on the test, because this really is about behaviors uh, that are exhibited throughout one's life. So I have so many questions that came up from that. I don't even know where to start. So let's talk about the behaviors. Like, what are some of the behaviors uh, that you could see as getting in the way of making good money decisions? Well, uh, certainly when it comes to parenting, I, I think one of the worst things that you can do is uh, rescue your kids. And this is more so, I think, you know, uh, late teenagers, kids that are off on their own, whether they're in college or working, but to come to their rescue repeatedly financially without consequence. That's just a, a horrible lesson uh, for kids to learn because the fact is the money's not always gonna be there and you shouldn't be, it's not healthy to have to rely on parents or, or others for that matter to be rescued periodically. One needs to become really independent and self-sufficient when it comes to managing their finances. So, so that's a huge one. Um, I think one of the other really unhealthy behaviors is to act as if the money will always be there, you know, to not talk about we're not spending money on one thing because we're saving for something else or uh, income is maybe down a little bit. And so we can't afford to take the same vacation this year that we did last year. But really, you know, not connecting the dots and pretending that there will always be money coming in, that there will always be opportunities to have those lavish vacations, make those impulse purchases. You know, I think those are also ho uh, horrible mistakes that, that parents can accidentally make. So let me put you on a, the spot with this question. And I know it's a tough one and you might say, who knows? Uh, but, but the answer, the, the question is this. So you, there's this line when things aren't going well in the household. And I find that a lot, that that's why parents don't want to talk about it because they don't want to go down that road and face their own fears necessarily or create concern, unnecessary concern with the kids. And you were talking about that line and that line is super gray in my mind. So help people who are in that situation understand 
where is that line? Like, what does it look like when you're getting too close to the edge of giving them information and that's bordering on creating fear and anxiety? Yeah, that's a, I'm glad you want to talk about this because I think it's so important and, and it is really tricky. It is quite the gray area. I mean, I certainly think one of the things to keep in mind is watching your kid really closely as you're having this conversation and not getting lost in your own head and not getting lost in your own feelings about, well, my income isn't where it needs to be at, or I didn't save appropriately, or I didn't you know, put, an, put away enough money for a 529, or we didn't invest well, whatever the case may be. So I think you have to really get out of your own head. And, and in some ways, luckily, Kids are, by design, very narcissistic, right? They they care about what's going to impact them and their lives directly. So one of the guidelines that I think parents can, can think about when they're talking to their kids about you know, financial issues or financial problems is very concretely, will anything change in that child's life? Let them know really clearly either what decisions you've made uh, that will impact them or what things are still potentially up in the air that you maybe want to have a discussion about. But it's really important to not get lost in your own head and to not, again, have the shame and guilt and whatever feelings you have really dominate the conversation. You really need to keep in mind uh, who your child is, what they can tolerate, but also what really will impact them uh, in a day uh, uh, in a day to day way, uh, because anything else. I would argue, even with an older teenager, it's kind of abstract, right? And worries, uh, you don't want to just communicate your worries to your kids. You want to be very specific and very clear. And as much as I, I said, be transparent, I think you can be transparent about the facts of what's going on. But in terms of your own anxiety and your own neuroses about it, that's not for your kids to handle or to manage. And so that line to me is very clear. Being able to manage your own feelings when talking to your kids is super, super important. Okay, and now let's swing the pendulum completely the other way. And now you have a family that it's absolutely clear that they have uh, they're of means. They have plenty of money, right? There, there, there may be a lot of money. So then what's the advice that way? Is there maybe too much oversharing the other way? You know, it's interesting. I've worked with, uh, with families, ultra high net worth families who teach their kids it's not polite to talk about money. And we will inform you when it's necessary or our financial advisor will have the conversation with you, but we're not going to talk about it directly. So it's so interesting to me how even if there is plenty of money available, and even if there are, you know, well-funded uh, trust funds that are for the kids, often the, the conversation is still avoided because it can feel really complicated. And again, I think people's own feelings can can enter the conversation. But if you are of means then I think it is in your best interest to start your kids early with some kind of educational program. And again, I think your program is wonderful in how it lays out what to talk about, how to talk about it really, really clearly and in a way that's not overwhelming. So I think whether it's your program or whether it is uh, hiring folks uh, to work with you to to have conversations as a family, to have conversations with you and a spouse potentially about what values you want to communicate to your children. The question of values is huge when it comes to financial literacy, because I think what we inadvertently communicate to our kids is the value that we assign to money and to other things in our life. And so getting some clarity around what those values are, I think, can be really, really helpful. So if you are of means and you want to invest a little bit uh, of money in that, uh, hiring a third party to come in and help you kind of articulate those things, I think, can be really, really helpful before you start talking to your kids about it. So if I asked you this question, if I said, Michael, tell my listeners what you think they need to know about the psychology of money conversation above and beyond what you just talked about, what is what are your words of wisdom that you would throw out to everybody? I think at the risk of repeating myself a little bit, I, I think for me, one of the central issues in the psychology of money is really self-awareness. So, you know, the old example of uh, as a parent, you have to put on the oxygen mask for yourself uh, before you can put on the oxygen mask for your kids in, in the airplane. Right. 
Um, you have to come to, I think, or, or continue to enhance your understanding of how you view money, how you feel about your own relationship with money, your own skills with money, your mistakes with money. And so, you know, the words of wisdom really are look in the mirror first and keep looking in the mirror and know that your feelings, your values are going to be communicated to your kids often unconsciously without you realizing it. And so the more you can bring those insights into your consciousness, I think the better armed you are to have these conversations. I mean, I think that's great, right? We tend to emulate as kids, emulate the behavior of our parents, good and bad, and understanding what their values are. And you tend to take some of those, if not all of those values, with you as you go down the path. So I think it's important, right, for parents to really understand where am I, what do I stand for, what am I about, uh, and then act in that way. And then hopefully it's not only what you say to your kids, but also what they're observing. So I, I think you're spot on with that. Thanks, Tom. Okay, great. Well, hey, Michael Klein, MK Insights. You heard it from the man. This is the guy. So if you want to get inside someone's head, go speak to Michael. He's great. And we really appreciate your insights on this subject, uh, on how to think about it. And I think, you know, us hearing this from a third party is super helpful for us to take a step back, reflect and figure out, okay, where am I? Where do I want to be? And how do I translate that to conversations with my kids? So Michael, thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Tom, and thanks for all the work you've done. I hope you enjoyed our episode of Total Sense. A special thank you goes out to Verso Studios at the Westport Library. Tune in for our next Money Chat.